Ignition sequence start. Six. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. Dr. Von Braun was an inspiration to all the people, I think, who, who met him. Through the people that he worked with, we made the selection uh, to build the Saturn V rocket. There is a wealth of captured Nazi documentation, captured by the Americans, by the British, uh, much of it with uh, the signature or initials of Ferdinand Von Braun and others. And those documents bear silent tribute, so to speak to the crimes in which those men were involved. Well, I'm sure without Werner von Braun we would not have been on the moon and we probably would never have started a very active uh, space program. He was on the cover of Life and Time and, and in many other magazines. He was a hero, he was a great space visionary, uh, you know, he was a great asset to the United States in terms of both military and civilian rocket development. It was controversial enough that we were using people who had formerly worked for Hitler on our own military projects. The American public, I think, would never have tolerated this had they known that these men weren't just had not just been engaged in work for the Nazis, but had been involved in uh, the uh, use of concentration camp inmates under horrific conditions. That is, that they were involved in Nazi crimes. He was an uncommon and unusual personality in every respect. He was extremely intelligent, of course, he was very good looking. Some people told him that he should go to the movies right away. You. Yes. And I myself am up here in the top row up there. And this picture was taken in Fort Bliss. There was a direct heritage in this rocket development that von Braun and his associates did from the V-2 missile for Germany to the Redstone missile for the United States to the Saturn launch vehicles and then Saturn V, you know, for landing on the moon. 
Well, one of the tragedies of American history is that the uh, rocket that took humankind to the moon, the Apollo 11 mission, uh, was built by individuals like Werner von Braun and Arthur Rudolph who were complicit in the criminal uh, utilization of concentration camp inmates under Nazi German auspices during World War II. The German uh, military supported the development because they wanted to have a defense weapon as it, as it is the, the duty of a military of any country, including Germany, to, to be prepared for defense. And I came in 1940 to Peenemünde and my first job was to develop these individual elements that you may have seen on the V2 rocket engine. There are 18 injection elements and the development and the improvement of these engines, that was my initial job. And since apparently I did a pretty good job there, I eventually was put in charge of the complete rocket engine. Uh, Hitler came and Hitler at first did not believe in rockets and he kept that negative attitude at rockets until 1943. At that time Germany had lost the air war against England Hitler wanted to do something and then he came to the rockets and said well and there are these guys in Peenemünde who are building those rockets and maybe we can use these for our uh, armament. Well the V2 production was moved underground after the air raid on Peenemünde of August 17th, 18th, 1943 by the RAF. The SS and the armaments ministry collaborated on moving underground because of the threat to V2 production by Allied air power. And that is how uh, the military use of the rocket that von Braun developed uh, came into uh, the forefront. When we got into Dora, we were unloaded, 100 people in a car, we were unloaded, and we were put in that tunnel. Imagine, if you will, that these prisoners were brought down to a subterranean factory of enormous dimensions to work on a weapon that had, to that point, existed solely in the realm of science fiction. It was right out of Flash Gordon. No one had ever built an operational missile before. And here was this enormous weapon that the, the prisoners knew was going to be launched against some of their home countries. Very courageously, prisoners engaged in sabotage. Naturally, there was a lot of sab sabotage. The Russian, the French, and the poor were very much involved in sabotage. They used to hang five people a day in the entrance of the tunnel to make sure that everybody knew that if they were caught in sabotage, they were next. So... Every day? Every day. And the tunnels at that time, that end, were unheated, they were unair conditioned, they were cold, they were damp, they were dank. Uh, because of prisoners living underground, they soon became completely dirty and unhygienic. The prisoners did not have adequate water, uh, they were often forced to drink their own urine, the thirst drove them crazy, there was no washing facilities, the result of course of that was very rapidly massive outbreak of lice, typhoid, and uh, uh, pneumonia and other diseases that set in particularly in December, January, February, March, you know, in 1943-44. A friend of mine who even wrote a book, he slept in one area and for days he was wondering how come his mattress was so big. He realized there was somebody under his mattress who had died a week ago. He didn't even realize it. The conditions were awful. Dying became part of 